So you have your brand new TrueNAS server up and running, but now you need to manage your files and give the right access to the right people. If that sounds like you, you've come to the right place. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. In today's tutorial, we're gonna focus on creating new user accounts, setting up data sets, configuring snapshots, and overall just managing the data that you wanna store on your TrueNAS server. So let's get started. If you haven't yet watched the first video in this series where I go over the installation and configuration of TrueNAS, I would go ahead and click that right now, as I am gonna be carrying along some of the concepts from that video and further explaining them in this one. And having a basis for where to start is always a good idea. In that first video, I created a new user account called Craft, which you can see if I click on the Users tab is sitting right there. Now, in this video, we are gonna create a couple more users, as Craft is the account that I access my file share with, but there's more than just me in this house. And in fact, I also wanna give some of my servers access to part of my file share, but I don't want them to view everything. So we're going to create some new data sets that only specific users have access to. So first up, I'm going to create a new user account by clicking on add, and I'm going to name this one editor, just in case I ever get around to hiring an editor. You're going to want to enter a full name, a username, and a password, and then scroll down here and check that Microsoft account box, and then hit submit. Next, we're gonna create another new account and I'm gonna call this one services. And this will be the account that my servers use to access a file share on the TrueNAS server. And same thing here, full name, username, password, and check that Microsoft box and then hit submit. So now we have a craft account who is a member of the wheel group. We have an editor who is a member of the editor group and a services account who is a member of the services group. And now that that's all done, it's time to go create our first data set. And to do that, we're gonna go over to the storage tab and click on pools. My TrueNAS server has two storage pools on board right now. It's got a 16 terabyte RAID Z2 and a 44 terabyte RAID Z2 with a 256 gigabyte cache disk. We're gonna be focusing in on the 44 terabyte RAID Z2 as the 16 terabyte is gonna be used for backups only. So to create a new data set, we're gonna to go to my 44 terabyte RAID Z2. I'm gonna click the three dots over here to the right and say add data set. First up, we need to give this data set a name and I'm gonna call this one Craft Computing and it's gonna be where I store all of my video projects. And once you've got a name typed in, go ahead and hit submit. Next, I'm gonna create another data set and I'm gonna call this one services. And then hit submit. Once you have your data sets created, it's time to start assigning permissions out to your different users. And we're gonna do that based on group membership. So to get started, I'm gonna click on the craft computing three dots over here on the right, and I'm gonna to go to edit ACL. So this is the ACL or access control list, and it's what TrueNAS uses to assign permissions to different users and groups inside the server. By default, any data set that you create will have root as the owner and wheel as the ownership group, and those are both defined right over here. On the right-hand side of the window is the access control list itself, and this is where we define those permissions for various users and groups. First up is the owner, which again is defined over here in this pulldown as root. And if we click on the permissions pulldown, we can see that root has pretty much full access to everything inside of this data set. The only thing it's not allowed to do is to delete the data set itself or delete any children created within this data set. Next up is the ownership group, which again is defined in this drop-down menu as wheel. So if we go down to the permissions for the wheel group, we can see that it has quite a few less permissions than the root user does, having only read and execute access within this data set. As I want the craft user to have full read write access to this data set, and craft is a member of wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and give full read write access to the wheel group. We're gonna select everything on this list except delete and delete children, which is talking about the data set permissions, not the directory and file permissions. Next up are the permissions for everyone else, which is defined as any user who is not either the owner itself or a member of the ownership group. And if we click on the permissions pulldown for everyone else, we can see that it still has full read and execute access, which I really don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the permission set for that group. And since we're talking about the craft computing data set, I do want to give read write permissions to my editor user I created earlier. So I'm going to click on add new ACL item. And if we scroll down, we can see a new item has been added here to the bottom of the list. Under who, I'm going to click on group. Under group, I'm going to pull down that menu and go all the way down to the editor group. Under ACL type, I'm gonna click on allow, and that is because I am granting permissions to the editor group to this directory, not restricting their access to it. Under permission type, I'm gonna click on advanced, and then under permissions, I'm gonna give it the exact same permissions as the other two groups, as I still want it to have full read write access to everything in this directory. 
And finally, there's one last thing that I need to set, and that is inherited permissions for all files and folders inside of this data set. So if I go back up here to the top to the owner, I'm gonna click on flags and I'm gonna click on inherit, and that will force all files and subfolders to have the exact same permissions as I've defined right here. And if everything looks correct, go ahead and click on save. And now we're gonna do basically the exact same thing for the services data set, only this time we're gonna set it for the services user group instead of the editor user group. So under owner, we're gonna click on inherit permissions. Under the wheel group, we're gonna make sure it has full read write access. We're gonna click on inherit. We're going to delete the everyone group. We're gonna add a new ACL. We're gonna define it as a group and define that group as the services group. We're gonna select advanced permissions. We're gonna give it full read write permissions. and make sure inherit is selected and then click on save. In the first video of this series, I created a file share at the root of the 44 terabyte Z2 disk pool. And if I click on the sharing tab and go over to Windows Shares SMB, you can see that file share right here. I do have that share directory mapped to the Y drive of my computer. And if I open that up, you can see the craft computing and services data sets that I created earlier. I set up the data share this way so my craft user could have access to all of the data sets inside of this directory. However, I am going to share out each of these directories individually, so let's get that configured now. Over here in the sharing tab and the Windows SMB, I'm going to click on add new file share. For the path, I'm going to pull down the mount directory and then the craft 44 terabyte directory and then click on craft computing. It will automatically assign the same name to the share as you have for the data set. And if everything looks good to you, go ahead and click on submit. And we're gonna do the same thing for the services share. Now that we have our shares created, it's time to fully test out our permissions. And to do that, I'm gonna open up the storage directory, I'm gonna open up craft computing, and I'm gonna create a new text document called craft computing. This will let us know that we are in this particular directory and whether or not our editor user has rights to edit and delete this file once he logs in. Next up, I'm gonna disconnect that Y drive. Next up, I'm going to map a new network drive, only this time it's going to be to the craft computing share instead of to the storage share. And we're going to connect using different credentials, and I'm going to connect using the editor credentials. So here is our craft computing directory and the text file I created earlier. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to see if I have rights to save. And indeed I do. Success. So that's a great example for one user for one permission set. But what happens if you want to add multiple users to multiple different groups? Well, you can do that by going to the accounts tab and then clicking on groups. So here you can see the three user groups I have created. And let's say we have a new editor starting on. Let's say I just hired Kraft and he needs to have access to the editing directory. So I'm going to click on the little arrow over on that side and I'm going to click on members and I'm going to add Kraft to the editor group and hit save. Now any rights that the editor group has, the user craft will also inherit from them. Last up, let's talk about one of my favorite features inside of TrueNAS to help protect your data, and that is the use of snapshots. Snapshots essentially take a picture of a moment in time inside of a directory, and they allow you to view and roll back to that moment in time at any point that you wish. To set that up, we're gonna go over to Tasks and then click on Periodic Snapshot Tasks, and then click on Add. Now the cool thing about snapshots is you can have different rules for different data sets, meaning you can define how often you would like to take snapshots and how long you keep those snapshots. So first off, under data set, I'm going to select my craft computing data set. Snapshot lifetime will define how long you keep your snapshots, and the default is two weeks. However, I'd like to push that out a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and say eight weeks. Under that is the naming scheme, and I would just leave this one alone, as all it does is define a timestamp for each snapshot. Up next is the schedule, and this is where you tell TrueNAS how often you want to take a snapshot of this data set. The default is daily, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that, and then click on Submit. Next up, we're going to do another one for services, so I'm going to click Add. I'm going to go to the Services data set. I'm going to only keep these ones for four weeks, as I don't need these to be quite as rock solid as my craft computing backups. I'm going to say daily as well, and then click on Submit. Snapshots are a great way to help protect your data from things like accidental deletion to the extreme case of a crypto locker attack. They allow you to roll back to a moment in time before bad things happen to your files. But remember, just like RAID, snapshots are not a backup. So how do you recover files in the event you need to use them? Well, for that, we're gonna to go to my existing FreeNAS install so I can show you some existing snapshots. Now, let's say I accidentally deleted one of my files inside of my server. Let's say my $640 gaming PC final build. Oh no, it's gone. Whatever will I do? 
Inside of Windows, I'm simply going to right click, go down to Properties, and then go over to the Previous Versions tab. I can see here right about 20 minutes ago, it took a snapshot of this directory. So if I double click that, it will open up a new window, which is that moment in time in this particular folder. We can then see right there, episode 139, my $640 gaming PC is still intact. So I can simply drag that to the current folder, wait for it to copy, and there we have it restored safe and sound. A couple of weeks ago when I was buying parts for this build, I was planning on showing you how to build a fork. Now the reason I had to show you that on my old server is for two reasons. Number one, the previous version tab inside of Windows will not work unless there's at least one periodic snapshot that's been captured by TrueNAS. Number two is once that snapshot has been captured, you actually need to restart either the SMB service inside of TrueNAS or the TrueNAS server itself for Windows to be able to see that there are previous versions available. Now there are methods to recover an entire snapshot, so like I said, if you've been CryptoLockered, you probably want to roll back the entire directory, not just individual files. And there are methods to do that, but that's another video entirely. As for this video, you should be all ready to dole out user permissions, new shares, and have periodic snapshots on all your directories. And if you have any questions about any of this process, let me know down in the comments below. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you like what you see and want to help support the content, make sure to join the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. You'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads, my once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, all. Beer for today is Trickle Up Economics from Three Magnets Brewing up in Olympia, Washington. It is a 6.5% hazy IPA. Boy, that is definitely a hazy IPA. I can barely even see through the, the stream. It pours really well, that's for sure. Hmm. Very tropical. Very, very citrusy. Passion fruit? I want to say passion fruit. Well, that's definitely a hazy IPA. Wow. <laughs> For those who don't like that hazy burn, you're not going to like this one. I don't know that I like this one. Yeah. Pineapple, passion fruit, and acid. That's what this one is. Yeah, this one might be a struggle to get through. Um, those kind of pleasant fruit notes are being just completely eroded away by the acid in this. A stimulus package for the working class, featuring all local ingredients and dry hopped with Azaka, Chinook, and Amarillo hops. Part of the proceeds from this beer will be distributed to employees who have been laid off or have had their hours reduced. That is kind of a cool program, uh, and I, I really like that you're doing that three magnets. I think I have two main problems with this beer. Number one, there's simply not enough flavor up front. I get a little bit of that citrus note, but by the time I realize what I'm tasting, it's completely overridden by the acid. Number two is the acid in this is so strong, that's all that is left lingering in my mouth. And like, like I've mentioned a number of times, there are some hazy IPAs I only enjoy about four ounces at a time. I only enjoyed about the first two ounces of this beer. It's just, it's too much. I mean, I'm still going to drink it, but final thoughts. It got a little bit warmer and I'm getting some hop flavor out of it now. It's still just exceedingly harsh. Even for a hazy, this is just beyond the realm of pleasant. It, it started unpleasant. Um, actually, this one got slightly better as it warmed up, but it's still not what I would consider very good.